Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. So once again, we have a bunch of new updates to cover, two big updates that just dropped earlier today. So the first one, of course, is the $10,000 bounty from the flow that has just appeared in the activity section through the HackerOne bug bounty program. For those who don't know, of course, there is a bounty program for PlayStation where hackers can report vulnerabilities in the PS4, PS5 and other PlayStation services and they can receive bounties, they can receive money for those reports as long as they stick to an NDA which prevents them from revealing those vulnerabilities. However, they can work with PlayStation on coordinated disclosure. So once the bug is suitably old where it's no longer going to affect most people uh, in a negative way, then it, can, then it can be disclosed if the person who reported it requests it to be disclosed. And the flow is one of the only people in this program who appears to be actively requesting disclosure on pretty much every uh, report that he makes. So that is why any new report from the flow is significant, especially when it's an amount as high as $10,000, which is typically what you get for a high severity report here, which are usually things like new kernel exploits, for instance, in the PS4 and PS5. So that is why we get excited whenever we see a new $10,000 report from the flow. So this is the one that we were hoping was coming. Uh, I did do a news update on this about a month ago because Zeko uh, teased it where he said there's a bug coming out, most likely for PS5, unsure if PS4 is affected, but doubt it. And we were wondering if it was going to be a new $10,000 report from the flow or whether or not it was referring to an older report. Like there's this $10,000 report from six months ago that has not yet been disclosed. So we were wondering if it, if it was going to be this one that's going to get disclosed and that's what was being referred to or if it was going to be a new report. Well, it looks like there is in fact a new report. So that is good to know, but it will probably take again three to six months or even longer before it gets disclosed. Although there is the one from six months ago, which is now six months old. So this could get disclosed any day now, potentially. So yeah, anyway, so definitely some exciting news there. Now, in terms of whether or not this will affect the PS4 or PS5, it may actually affect the PS4 here because we did get the 12.02 update recently. And it does say here we've made some security fixes to the system software. And that's the update note that gets added whenever they have obviously fixed some kind of vulnerability, which definitely correlates to uh, this bounty reward here. So most likely for PS4, I guess, in this particular case, uh, if we look at the PS5, there was the 10.60 update that came out recently as well but there is no mention of any security fixes in the system software for 10.60 nor in 10.40 either so we'll have to wait and see i wouldn't necessarily say there's no chance it will work uh, just because we don't have any updates here the flow was actually asking for a 10.40 pup file recently in the research and development discord for ps5 hacking so he may be trying to attempt it on the ps5 as well so we'll have to wait and see there but uh, yeah, still pretty interesting. A new $10,000 report. So that's some more hope for a new exploit to come out sometime maybe later this year. So we do have another topic for the PS4. But before we get into that, another big release that has happened here for the PS5 is an update to the remote Lua loader, allowing it to run the UMTX kernel exploit. So this is a pretty big deal. We can now use Lua script to load the kernel exploit for the PS5. This is particularly useful for people on 6.0 to 7.61 who up until now can only use a Blu-ray drive to trigger the exploit by burning a blank Blu-ray disc. So obviously you do need to have um, specific games in order for this to work. It only works with games that run the Artemis engine which are specific Japanese titles. So they can be quite difficult to get a hold of those games uh, if you are not in the Japanese market, but it should still be possible to get a hold of these. So here's the list of games that are supported here. So you just need to have a version of that game in order to load this. And if we take a look at the payloads, you can see we now have a umtx.lua. So kernel exploit for PS5 for firmwares below or equal to 7.61. Once done, it will jailbreak the game process as well as the PlayStation, allowing more access to the system. And then after you've successfully ran the UMTX exploit, you can then load these additional follow-up payloads. There's a kernel data dumper, a read K log, so you can get the kernel log from your PS5, and then also an elfloader.lua. So that will run essentially John Tornblum's elf loader, which will then allow you to send additional elf payloads to the console so that you can essentially jailbreak your PS5 using this, which is pretty damn awesome. So so that is how this works. The tricky part, of course, is getting the save files 
copied over to your PS5. Now, I think the common option that's going to be used in the future is using a backup. So Master S9 has got this PS5 backup that you can restore that will restore the modified save files for a bunch of the different games. So four games listed here. He may have added more since this was posted because there are some updated versions of this backup. But essentially what you can do is you can put this backup on a USB drive and restore it onto your PS5. It will kind of reset your console when you restore somebody else's backup. So make sure you back up your own data first before doing that. And then you'll get the modified save files that you can load. So that's a way of getting the save files on there if you don't have access to Apollo or the save wizard or anything else that you can use for this. So that is something that you can use. I believe this current version of the backup still has the older version of the Lua loader. You need the latest version, so you'll probably want to wait until Master S9 maybe releases a new PS5 backup with the latest iteration of the Lua loader. Or if you're really impatient, the other way to do it is to just restore the current backup, even though it's using older versions, and then you can run the FTP Lua payload, which will actually allow you to replace the Lua loader. You can swap out the save files through FTP. Uh, that is another thing that is possible, although you do need a disk version of the game, I believe, for that. But generally, I would just wait until we have a updated version of the backup with the latest Lua loader already on there that you can restore. So luckily I didn't have to restore a backup in order to get it on my 7.61 system, but for most other people you'll have to restore a backup to get the save file on there unless you have Save Wizard or Apollo on a jailbroken PS4 that you can use. So with all of that said and done, when I run the Lua loader here, you can see it shows up 7.61 Lua loader running, and then I can switch over to my computer here. I can run the Lua loader, so you've got the Lua loader itself that sends the uh, Lua scripts and then we have the UMTX Lua script ready to go so I can just open up a terminal window on my desktop here in the same location as these files and then just copy the command from the project and paste it in and then I can just change the hello world Lua to UMTX.Lua and then change the IP address of course to the IP address of my PS5 so it's ready to go and then all I have to do is press enter and that will start running the UMTX kernel exploit. And what I love about this is how incredibly fast and reliable it is. Just look how quickly it loads the UMTX exploit on the console. It only takes a couple of seconds. It's even faster than the BDJ, uh, Hammer 83's BDJ implementation, which is already pretty damn fast and reliable. But this is pretty rock solid compared to other methods. So, so that's a nice improvement. And then once that runs, we can then load the ELF loader. So I'll also just change it to the ELF loader. Lua script and run that and then that will load the elf loader John Tornblum's elf loader which will then allow me to send additional payloads to the console uh, just through the normal payload injectors so I'm going to use netcat GUI of course and I'll just use the uh, shell server from John Tornblum to demonstrate this so I'll copy this elf payload in to netcat GUI make sure I have the IP address and port number set correctly and then when I go to inject you'll see that it actually loads on the PS5 itself. So that was all done just through a Lua script running from a save file. We've actually got payloads running on my 7.61 system without having to use the BDJ exploit. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. You now have another option to load the kernel exploit for the PS5 on 6.0 to 7.61. Uh, it will also work on older firmwares too. It just really only has practical uses on 6.0 to 7.61 right now. But uh, yeah, still pretty cool. And another good thing about this is that this Lua entry point works up to the latest firmwares on the PS4 and PS5 too, which means that if any other future kernel exploits come out, we might be able to load them using this as well. So, so a really, really good position to be in there as well. Also, as I was finishing up this video, I noticed Master S9's released a new version of his remote Lua loader, which includes the UMTX Lua file here as well. So this is just a convenient UI tool that you can use to, to send the Lua files just by selecting uh, what Lua file you want to send, the UMTX one and then the ELF loader. Makes it a little bit easier than sending it through the terminal as I was doing in the video here. So I'll leave that linked in the description if you want a more convenient way to send those Lua scripts over the network. Okay, so moving on from that, we do have one other thing for the PS4 here, and that is the new release of FPKGI for the PS4. So if you're familiar with PKGI on PS3, this is the PS4 version of it. Um, if you're not familiar with that application, this can essentially be used as a front end for installing package files from other servers. So for instance, somebody could set up a server that has access to hundreds 
of different package files for PS4. And all you need is the link to the JSON files on those servers. You can add them into the config for your FPKGI uh, application. And then when you launch it, it will have access to all of the package files on that server. And whenever those package files get updated and those JSON files get updated, uh, you can just go on FPKGI and all of those new package files will show up being ready to download. So that way you can have multiple, I guess, CDNs or content delivery networks, uh, lots of different servers from various people who are hosting certain packages, and you can just add the links to those and be able to download them directly uh, using FPKGI. Of course, you can also set up a server locally to serve your own package files from your computer or your home network to your console if you want. That is another option that this can be used for, but I suspect that's probably not what most people are going to be using this for. You can use R1 and L1 to switch between the different categories for homebrew, you know, DLC, apps, games, and updates. And then you can just select whatever package file you want, and it will download and install it to your console. I'm just using my old server running on my computer right now because I don't really know if there's been any, uh, you know, external servers set up for this yet. There are a few bugs I've noticed with this at the moment. It does seem to struggle to download um, specific package files that are over a certain size. I have seen this problem in other applications too in the past, so it's probably something that can be worked out. It could also be to do with the download location. Changing the download location might fix that issue, but I need to have a little bit more play around with it first to kind of figure that out. But for now anyway, it is a pre-release build, so bugs are expected in this early stage but this will certainly be useful for downloading package files in the future. So FPKGI, I may make a separate dedicated tutorial on this soon, showing you how to set this up from start to finish. So if this update wasn't already packed enough, we have another huge release here from Idlesauce, a update to the PS5 self decryptor, now adding 6.xx and 7.xx support. So again, this is the decryptor that we've been using that's allowed all of these 5.x games to be dumped recently. And we've just seen a new release not long ago, a few days ago, of a lot of these uh, 5.x games that were dumped being all kind of released at once. So they're now all available. But now we can start potentially dumping games all the way up to 7.61 on the PS5, which is uh, definitely exciting with this new release here. So 6.xx to 7.xx support with credits to Echo Stretch there. So yeah, pretty exciting. Let's see what happens. A lot more game dumps potentially to come here. And now that we have the Lua loader working with UMTX, this can be loaded with the Lua loader or the BD jailbreak as well. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.